At first, I think I feel the weight of you. But then you rumble far and wide. Opening minds with after-effect causes, core intentions often ventured into flaws. This lack of clarity often leads to muddy waters. But as you scribe your language across the sky, no hand of man will frame your immortal synergy. You free me, humbled under the rumble of your energy. My undoubtable insignificance greets me with a smile within the metal of your echo. Your unsown liquid blankets of cold revitalize as they mold to my flesh. Energized by the intimacy of your touch, skin comes into contact with you. Invisible coatings flying around my form without judgments, and I remember that that felt nice. But back then and there, I felt alive. Purpose staked and marked, I instruct my clothes to disembark as I seek a recharge for the spirit. Another rumble, can you feel it? The intensity builds relentlessly and now I crave it. I welcome your power to form systems. Cyclical weather patterns play out rhythms all around me. Eyes shut tight, face lifted up to the sky. You caress me with your whispers. Tears of chosen refresh, no button needed when the sky falls. This place is being and I admire all of your gifts. Presence of breath as my spotlight shines on your crest. Faded whispers of wind lessen contact on skin as you pass by, but you do not leave me without a smile. And I thank you. This poem crafted from gratitude, from being in tune with this moment which meant so much to me and nothing to you. After all, you are only passing through as I glued myself to your service, and I know this, but if a care is there I do not notice because I chose this chose to give focus to your rhythms as parts of your systems fell down around me and by my simple presence in your wake which made no difference to your ways I am lifted now sitting in the remembrance shaping semblance in my mind attempting to breathe and be as you do what you do and I smile Thank you. Yes. Woo! 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 Thank you very much. Sometimes it feels as though my heart is shaped like an hourglass, wherein infinite grains of sand open towards paths that flow into an apex of restriction. And housed within this friction, tiny shards of glass fall, only to open outward, refracting the light amidst the dark. And I can't help but feel the need to ask, as I seek answers along my path, how will we heal our hearts when imbalances through finances carve chasms? Aortic severing slash all save a few strands of connection. Valves of cardiac compassion malfunction as austeric attachments act in reckless abandon towards all those who do not fit the bill. Image and items present in pride of place, so is it any wonder so many are ill, abused, abandoned and detached? When a fraction of the cost that dropped in a day, in a day for a burnt out building born of religion could save so many people, so many children, or pay to support futures from falling into glacial gutters and being encased behind bars. Well appointed altruism could play a part in leading a path towards prosperity. And yet there is such hesitancy. So allow the strength in vulnerabilities to be seen truly without judgment, and instead of culling collective consciousness and creativity, support it to blossom and break free through cracks of concrete trapping to be all that could ever be, enabling all to think of dreams as bridging possibilities into probabilities instead of narratives that portray and play victims, dehumanize cockroaches and weeds sprayed with chemicals and electromagnetic streams of poison through feeds, spluttering into silence, killed in names of ill-appointed power and greed, please. Do not feed the fears. Turn towards your tears and feel the weight of their floods as your blood transfuses teachings within the loss. The costs paid are outweighed by lessons that serve as vessels of evolution. Within each challenge resides a solution to how we frame the inception of each new thought. You mustn't be afraid to dream a little bigger, darling. 
Perception is nine-tenths of the law, universal, not letter. And I believe that all things can be better, but it feels as though there is no justice for those of us without the right credit and credentials. Guilt guard and scapegoat barred until proven innocent. Facts fall foul when framed as fake news. Truth feels phased from vision, carved in two headstones that read, Here lies the eyes of an action. And there are no boundary lines, save for the ones which we drew. And like money, these two are fictitious concepts that do not serve to heal. Homeless sit on streets questioning if they are real as countless footsteps pass by without missing a beat. Skin is skin is skin is skin is just a casing and not where the emphasis of defining should begin. See what is within. Hear what behaviour is communicating. Search the strength in numbers and multiply instead of allowing divides in time where unity is required to sire in a new way of being. Bring ends to archived ancestral actions. Make history have an impact so that someday it can be looked at and we can say proudly that we learned something before it was too late. I grow so tired of seeing butterflies fly from broken bloody bodies. Killing fields forming into planetary swarms and the only reason that I can believe that these scripts do not stop is because the cost of progress and product when weighed against the lives and progress of challenge does not bring the stock market <coughs> advantage nor line the pockets of those that hold the world in hard, cold hands. Now, I've been told uh, you can't help them all more times than I can recall. But I'm a fool who does not know when to quit. I refuse to not see the value in every single part, every bit. The us, the overlooked, the unlistened, the dismissed, and there is a shift. And although it's not welcome, we will for walk forward, laying each part bit, brick by brick, because the outdated ways are failing. And all around the world, people heed the calling for change. Within the way to each new day, we must make peace with our pain and in turn help others to do the same. No more turning away, no more external blame. We take responsibility for each footprint and our names and embrace the silence within the darkness that leads towards the light of a new healing age. Sometimes it feels as though my heart is shaped like an hourglass, where an infinite grains of sand open towards paths that flow into an apex of restriction. And housed within this friction, tiny shards of glass fall, only to open outward, refracting the light amidst the dark. Thank you. <laughs> now they say the blood runs thicker than water. I'm just saying, it doesn't always taste like it ought to. See, blood has this way of demanding respect. Despite its adversities are often getting wet, and I know no they to put faith in their words, and perhaps that's why I often feel it absurd that people who are simply related from fucking hold greater sway over those who have done nothing to clans where red rivers run deep, and despite all that blood, they still shit where they sleep. See, water has a tendency to go with the flow, to follow through journeys without knowing their goals, whereas blood would have clotted, perhaps never run, and still have the audacity to call him her son, and there's a reveal, a little personal truth, and some out there may well find it uncouth, but fuck your judgement. Am I your son? Have your words and actions left me undone? Have you flicked through the pages of my personal truths where a monster's apron strings have twisted in two daggers of malice, manipulation and pain, and all in the name of hiding our shame? Now you can't choose your family again a narrative play, so I smile and add, maybe but you can choose to walk away. See, I see no sense in wading on through bloodstained halls and slipping on sinew where words have no meaning, no substance, no depth, and liquid red rubies drip malicious intent through distorted dioramas placaming false truths, false claims of love misrepresented through photographed moments filled with the stain as arguments erupt again and again. I want to stop taking photos until you all smile. There again, the fight to hold back the bile, but this seems now quite poignant. Perhaps rather apt, the covering of truth beneath twisted media hat, a kind of pre-photoshop for hiding the fact of the relentless flash exposure until you yield into a smile that hurts you, a smile that brings pain, and no one will know this, they'll all think you're insane, because what would a child know such things, they will say. What will the neighbours think of you acting this way? You mustn't utter such words of family, they will not go away, you must love and respect them at the end of the day. Pathways 
are made within little brains. Not helpful, but survival is the name of the game. Such power holds language upon isolated souls. Poor coping strategies are bandages for deep rotten holes. It's why cover-ups are easy. Because the truth can be cold, especially when narratives don't fit cultural moulds. And when you no longer trust your feelings, when the truth has no hold, the blade that cuts cross-hatched meanings forms the safety net upon where you fall. And these times are now long past. Though wounds slow to heal and through decades of work I can occasionally feel that my thoughts and my feelings are not to be buried, that even such hard times are things to be cherished. Because the water around me is truly divine. Its colour turned to claret and I'm not talking wine. It's taken some, uh, this life what I have chosen and it's taken some time but I have faith in my friendships that help to keep me alive. Old code can be reprogrammed, but you've got to be kind. Embrace dark waters and give yourself time. They fuck you up, your mum and dad, Philip Larkin once scribed, and I remember reading that and it set me on fire. So fuck all the judgments, fuck other shame. They do not walk the paths you do, they have no bloody claim. The darkness runs deeper, warping definitions of sane. Old habits are hesitant to welcome in new ways. I give gratitude to the blade that helped, that helped keep me alive carving red lines of contradiction before able to describe the feelings inside of me, the shame that grew and developed a reality that to this day feels true, that I am poison, that I am what's wrong, and there are times where I can challenge this, those times where I feel strong. But in moments of weakness, when weary and tired, I become consumed by the sickness and question why I'm alive. Thanks.